We are in Istanbul for the fifth uh, international conference of housing arranged by Yapay Industry Merkezi. And also welcome to the architectural series titled Architects Talk or Conversations with Architects. Now I have a very distinguished guest uh, with me, uh, Charles Ramfro, and uh, thank you very much for joining us after the uh, lecture. <laughs> you are, I know you are tired, but I mean it's a great opportunity to have you here so that we can maybe uh, talk uh, a little bit. Uh, just before you, um, actually, uh, we had an interview with Mr. Fuxas, mm -hmm. and we were emphasizing the significant difference between uh, the tradition of architectural offices in Europe and in states, or states and elsewhere, let me say, it's better mm -hmm. to state it like that. Most of the office, he also mentioned it in, in his lecture that uh, there are big firms, institutional firms, and like uh, AROP, uh, SOM, KPF, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the projects are not based on research, but rather, uh, I mean, they are producing a kind of a typology that is mm -hmm. open to reproduction. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, you are not coming from that tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true? I mean, can, can you... Uh, I mean, how much, let me say, uh, <clears throat> feel yourself uh, from America in that sense? Right. Um, our practice is um, among a few, but certainly not unique in the United States. Um, uh, it's based more in a tradition of research, um, mm -hmm. as you would find in a smaller European practice. Mm -hmm. um, when I joined uh, my partners, Liz Diller and Rick Scofidio, mm -hmm. 18 years ago, uh -huh. there were only six of us in the, in yeah. the practice. And so... 2004. Uh, to, uh, no, I joined in, in 1997. In but you became and, a partner. And I became a partner in 2004. Four, yeah. um, so... Uh, at that point, we were taking projects in succession, one at a time, and it allowed us the luxury of um, dr drilling down into each project um, and understanding the, the problem of the problem. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't have a problem, we would bring a problem to the table, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. we still like to do with each of our projects. Um, it's not about the client giving us a problem. It's about us giving the client a problem. Uh -huh, um, and so I think that that's a, that's a methodology. And it forms the basis of the research. Correct. That's, uh, what is it that we're trying to solve? What is it we're trying to get at? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a, 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 that is a methodology that is unusual in the States, but not unheard of, mm -hmm. um, particularly in New York City. Um, and in other college towns in Boston and Chicago, um, where teachers are also practitioners um, and vice versa, so that the field of research um, is directly impacting the practice of the ar of architecture, um, and also the practice of architecture is able to to find its way back into um, the academia. I think that is one of the. Uh, basic uh, significant difference between, not, not maybe different, but uh, in, in Europe, I mean, most of the teachers uh, in the field of architecture are already practicing or vice versa. Those who are in practice are, have great connection, right. uh, close connection with the architectural schools. Right. It is uh, true for some of the schools in states and maybe that makes a significant difference in terms of that and when I was making a kind of a search, uh, I have seen that you were assigned as the national academician yes. in 1914. <laughs> it's it's it was very interesting. I mean, the, what does this national academician means? It, I think I think it's a very important title when I when I yeah. look look around. Yeah. Um, it's it's an honorific title. It's yeah. not. Uh, you don't do anything mm -hmm. after you become an academician. Um, and I believe that the title academician is a slightly leftover title from when the 
the academy was, well, it is still an academy. It's an academy where you go to learn and to teach, and it made you an academician. Mm -hmm. That started 150 years ago. Yeah. Now, um, it's not required that you be a teacher. It's not required that, that academia is part of your practice, but it sounds like that because the title is academician, national academician. Doesn't it also refer uh, to a kind of a validation that, that your work is very transparent to research and academia? Uh, I mean, I, it's a very generous reading of the title, um, but it's, it's not explicitly so. Um, I think the people that have been inducted into the academy are um, at the top of their field in giving, uh, giving to, the, to their respective areas. Mm -hmm. So whether it's architecture or art or urban design or dance or writing, um, these people are, are contributing at the highest level to their, to their field. Um, whether it's research-based uh, is, is maybe not the mm -hmm. issue uh, from what I can tell. But you are still teaching at Columbia, as far as I know. Um, I teach and, on... And you are, gra you are graduated. Yeah. Your, at least your master's is from Columbia. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, I teach on and off. Mm -hmm. um, I have taught at Columbia. I've taught at Rice University. I've taught mm -hmm. at uh, Parsons New School for Design. Uh, I've taught high school at uh, the Friends Seminary, which was actually my favorite place to teach. Mm -hmm. um, Why? Why? because of fresh minds mm. they're just open and they're they're smart uh, kids these kids are from well educated households and you know there it's a it's a school of privilege in a certain sense but it's not a selfish privilege it's a service privilege it's a privilege that wants to use its um its its uh talents out in the world that's mm. what friend seminary does and so the, the, the students there are curious and hungry and smart and they have supportive teachers and parents. And I came and taught architecture to them mm -hmm. for a year, a whole year, uh, two semesters. Uh, one semester, having the students think about culture mm -hmm. at large. Mm -hmm. What is it? So we, we, I did with them uh, a, a joint condominium tower public museum. And so, and on the end of the High Line where the Whitney's now being made. And so the problem that I asked them to think about, knowing that they understand high culture of art collecting, their parents probably are artists or they collect art, but that also there's a socialist agenda here where I asked them to think about making a new kind of condominium building that could also be public in nature so that the rooms could be open to the public, that mm. artwork that's been collected by the owners could always be accessed by the public even as the building is a private building. So I was trying to get at one of the pr problems of society, which is the privatization of, mm -hmm. of, of all of our things. Um, and these students d had never really thought about architecture. They'd never really thought about the problem that was b being built all around them. And yet they dove in, they, they solved it. They made so many ingenious uh, things that my graduate students rarely do because they're just <laughs> they they, they're just thinking they fresh. This. <laughs> they're they're just they're just very fresh. I've had great students in every place. <laughs> this issue of culture, I think, is significantly important in your yes. work because, as as far as I recognize, you are working uh, in a multidisciplinary way, where I mean, uh, the art is uh, the performance, the the installation and everything is an integrated part of architecture. At least you are pushing sure. uh, those disciplinary fields to be an integrated part. And, and mm -hmm. in your office, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there are people, not only architects and coming from other disciplines. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this makes, this, this defines a unique uh, existence, I believe. There are uh, a few exa other examples, but uh, uh, how, how do you evaluate this um, uh, integration between this multidisciplinary uh, thing? Because, I mean, multidisciplinary is a very fashionable word in terms of, I mean, architects working with engineers, I mean, sustainability issues, etc., etc. We are, we are familiar with that. But when you come to the other side, uh, working with artists and performance uh, uh, 
uh, etc. It's it's a different kind of a multidisciplinarity. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we I think Gore Vidal said it uh, that we've become pancake people mm -hmm. as a, as a culture. Mm -hmm. um, we used to be specialists, all of us. You know, uh -huh. we had we had expertise. Um, and now, because of the internet, because of the ease of access of information, we have short attention spans for one thing, but we also have broadened our base of knowledge Interest, uh, and interests. Uh -huh. And that's, I think, one of the reasons that uh, multidisciplinary as a concept is so fashionable now, mm -hmm. because it explains, um, you know, non photographers posting on Instagram and having five million followers Admires, or yeah. <laughs> and, and so the, all of a sudden they're photographers or people that write blog posts are now journalists even if they were coming from some other place. So I think the internet has allowed the, the, the definition of interdisciplinary to, to broaden itself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm not sure that that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I, I actually really like... It, it has two sides, I think. Yes. Two sides yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. yeah, and one has to be careful and understand what one is saying. So, for instance, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's say, journalism. So, architectural journalism in the States that's professional and paid is dead. Yes. No, There are no new posts. You know what happened in the New York Times. Uh, while Michael Kimmelman is a wonderful journalist and, and an excellent cultural critic, he's not an architect and he comes from outside the field. Um, not to say that he doesn't bring a valuable point. There used to but, be architectural columns. Yes, and, and, and so when the New York Times takes somebody from outside of architecture and puts them in the architectural criticism column and all the other papers in the country aside from the Dallas Morning News have canceled and killed off their their journalists there is no professional journalism in the realm of architecture this is one example of mm -hmm. the way you know the kind of broadening of our culture has caused i think a, a kind of um, a, 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 an absence and mm -hmm. uh, and I want journalists, I want people who are paid, I want them to have that discipline, mm -hmm. that rigor, that in-depth research. Um, and I actually don't think it's a good thing that, that citizen journalists are taking over. Is, is it something which will happen to architecture sooner or later? Good question. <laughs> so one of the issues, um, you know, so, so Alfredo um, uh, Brillenberg, who spoke mm -hmm. at this conference earlier today, made the very stunning point, mm -hmm. I think, that, and he, he makes this all the time, but, but it was the first time I'd heard it, that the favelas are mm -hmm. actually the model of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, the, these, these, these shanty towns, mostly in South America, but I think probably some around Istanbul as well, mm, that's true, yeah. um, uh, somehow embody the future of our society and culture. And the reason that they embody the future of society and culture is because they allow for the owners to build they're on their own. Mm -hmm. Basically, writing the architect, architect out of the equation. Um, and and I, so I have mixed feelings about this, of mm -hmm. course. Um, he also made the point that uh, the uh, medieval city, mm -hmm. as built over time and by the residents of the city, is are, are the cities that we love the most, mm -hmm. and I don't true, yeah. I don't doubt that to a certain degree. However, when I look at a place like Venice, mm -hmm. or um, or or even uh, you know P Paris, what, pre Hausmann or Hausmann Paris, mm -hmm. whatever, these are cities we love. They're beautiful cities, and they're made by architects, and they're made. Uh, in, in ways that there's a collectivized belief system um, and that, that, that made these cities e emerge uh, as y unities, as, as, as singularities. But you don't believe in Corbusier's Paris? No, I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but I'm saying there has to be a different, it can't be just one or the other. You know, yeah, like yeah. throw it away, give um, the people land, let them, <laughs> give them a pile of materials and let them go to town mm -hmm. versus, uh, you know, modernist monstrosities that happened all over Europe and America. 
bulldozed uh, slums and, uh, and government made projects. Those are horrible too, they're terrible. So I think, you know, what is the, what is the, new, the new position? And I think architects must be part of this. And, and we have expertise, we need to bring expertise to the table. Um, mm. I don't believe my, I, I love my fellow citizens. I think mm. they're great. Uh, but I don't think they are necessarily the best people to make a thriving city. Uh, are you referring to New York or um, the states? Any, anywhere. I, I just, I think there's, we have, as architects, have expertise that we can bring to the situation. And when I, when I think that there are certain movements that might say, let the people build what they want, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, I, I get a little nervous about the outcome. As, as you referred, actually, you are uh, working in an institutional firm, which has been maybe uh, there uh, long before you have participated as a partner sure. and, uh, and uh, dealer and Scofidio. Uh, and then uh, you, you became an integral part of this mm. uh, body. Uh, Uh, how, how does it uh, to be a, a kind of a, a part of a, I mean, tripartite partnership? Uh, because, I mean, for example, when we are talking with uh, Mr. Fuxas, I mean, mm. he, he's the only one. Right. Of course he's not, but yes. I mean, uh, uh, he represents everything and sure. not as powerful <laughs> as uh, tripartite partners and things like that. So mm -hmm. it, it always... Uh, there is a kind of a dilemma between an institutional architectural body and a kind of a person-based office. Sure. Well, I think you're illustrating um, one of the contemporary conditions of practice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as architecture is maybe waning mm -hmm. um, for its sort of singular vision and, um, you know, kind of look at me, mm -hmm braggadocio, so too is the sole proprietor office. Um, and, and I think the difference now is that um, uh, instead of going into corporate mode mm -hmm. um, where there are multiple heads, there is a new model that's emerging that is allowing uh, firms like ours mm -hmm. uh, and, and several peer firms in New York City mm. to to broaden laterally with mm. leadership that is equal or mm. almost equal mm. um, but that with work that it, that is that is developed project by project and not in a corporate manner so mm. research based work um, the, I think this is a fairly new model It's not the Gordon Bunshaft SOM model mm -hmm. um, of, of the corporate world that you're referring to when America started mm -hmm. exporting mm -hmm. um, its, its products as a typologically based, mm -hmm. uh, reproducible mm -hmm. product. You have examples here in Istanbul of the, of the, true, yeah. of the Hilton, yeah. you know, yeah, and that was Gordon Bunshaft. Yeah, um, and I kind of like that era. Our old fight. Yes, mm -hmm. but 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 we have a different era now that that allows for multiple heads to exist. Um, it's difficult, but it it it's happening. But still, do you do you feel a kind of a one-to-one -one representation between yourself and the institutional body of the office? Um, you know, we we each work on all of the major projects together, together but huh? we That's, each also have hmm. our own set of projects hmm. uh, that we run. So there's a vo the voice of all three partners in every project, but then there are projects that we individually take over. We just have too much work to have it mm -hmm. be otherwise. Um, and so for the work that we collectively have decided we each have, we are, you know, the, the, the kind of s single mm -hmm. voice to the client if, if need be. But we do try to maintain an institutional voice, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. uh, that we're, where the problems that we're trying to work on through the research and through each of the projects that we take uh, are collectively identified and agreed to in advance. Um, and that we, we really try to make sure that what we put out uh, represents 
the, the institution of Delersco Fidio and Renfro. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, as you pointed out, the office has changed from a small art studio mm -hmm. um, to a, after I joined in 97, w that's when we started making um, architecture. I'm not saying I brought that work, but the, the makeup of the, of the partnership changed in such a way that it allowed for larger scale products, uh, projects to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so, you know, I brought a kind of pl a place to, the, to, to that studio that was almost missing before, mm -hmm. in a way. That, um, and, and so, you know, I feel like I have a voice. Now, uh, that's, that's equal to my partners. We're about to expand our uh, firm to, to bring in new partners even still. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's challenging, it's interesting. Uh, and and every, every new change in the organization will mean a change in the way that we make work. When I look at the website, most of the projects that, that I have seen uh, uh, has uh, either related to education, culture, or as you have mentioned at the beginning, if it's a standard project, you create a uh, problem. underlining problem right. or a kind of a concept that that yeah. that makes it unique uh, right. isn't it so I mean it's, 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 uh, so that gives a kind of a uh, ground for making an alternative research or uh, forcing the typologies maybe that that's mm. how many of the projects are coming out yes well as I said before um, you know, we're a practice and we want to make sure that our practice stands for something, that we are contributing something to, to architecture and to culture. Um, and so we aren't going to make a project just as a service architect. We, mm -hmm. just, we aren't just gonna, you know, give the you know, client uh, drawings of the walls and the, I mean, there are plenty of architects who can do that. Our That's practice true, yeah. is, is intentionally different. Um, it's not to say that uh, other practice, we wouldn't encourage other practices to be doing what to, they to, do. <laughs> well, right, but also to, to be investing more energy into thinking about what they're doing. Because I think mm -hmm. so much work in the States is done mindlessly. Um, and uh, so it's important that every job we do, even if it seems like you know, a, a kind of service oriented job, such as making an academic building, is also positing something mm -hmm. that that it that we are interested in looking at, or that we think society could use to look would be useful for society to look at in a different way. So, can we say that you are designing in the way you teach, or you are teaching in the way you design? Sure. These are not two separate worlds for you. Sure. No, no. no it's all it's all part of the same process. Um, when we teach, when we teach. We don't ever give a program, neither mm -hmm. Liz Rick or nor I, when we teach, give a program at first. It's always a, a, uh, <clears throat> an, an idea <clears throat> or uh, another kind of problem. Mm -hmm. I had, when I taught at Parsons, I taught the project that I showed today, the factory in mm -hmm. China. When mm -hmm. we first started working on that factory, I gave the class to my students. But how I gave it to them is I said, you need to make, design and make a handbag. And, um, and so they, they had to design and make a handbag by hand. And I was taking them to China. So I said, the, the handbag must be useful on your trip to China. And then when, you, <clears throat> when we go to China, you'll show the handbag to the owner of the company and she will critique the handbag. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're in China, you will take the place of one of the workers in the fa on the factory floor who is making the handbags like you mm -hmm. just made. So that was half the semester, was, was actually trying to understand what it meant to make this bag, what it meant to be a laborer, um, and to th rethink the problem of, of the bag. There was nothing about architecture for half of the semester. But then we were able to, to get into the architectural project um, with, uh, you know, c c coming at it from a completely different point of view. What is it that's being made? Who, who am I working for? This is the, 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 the worker in the factory. 
Actually, <coughs> earlier we were talking with Mr. Fuxas a, a similar issue because he's make he, he has lots of work in China, yes. uh, uh, starting with the airport. And uh, uh, my students are this semester working in Shenzhen area uh, for an urban project. And uh, there are two things that uh, these uh, uh, countries like China in, or in most of the emerging market uh, uh, ca uh, emerging countries are seen either as a market or a very unique research field. Yes. So this is the dilemma because most of the architects go there to produce something, to sell it, uh, and it's a great opportunity for them. Sure. But on the other hand, it's a very unique situation, different than Europe, yeah. different than states. And so what what you are underlining is the second part i think this this is uh, very valuable uh, because i mean day after day it is becoming more similar to uh, the other parts of the sure. world uh, and uh, there's no uniqueness in that sense uh, sure. so i mean um, how do you see this cultural and geographical differences uh, yeah. as as you travel all around the world yeah. well it's a conundrum isn't it mm -hmm. how can we be global architects and actually design and make for local conditions. It's mm -hmm. impossible. Uh, a Western architect can't come the, the in. The only to, way I think I'm interrupting, but the only way is trying to make them similar to us. I mean, if you if if you take the short uh, sure. cut, uh, then then it is the easiest way because I mean, uh, most of the foreign offices what they do is they reproduce what they are already reproducing sure. in their. Uh, table because it's sure. and the demand is like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, there's no question. Uh, it depends on whether you believe in the global, you know, a, a, a global um, kind of uniformity or whether you believe in 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 local complexity or yeah, lo local conditions. And you know, you see the backlash in in mm -hmm. the world around you. Russia, even here in Turkey, yeah. like nationalism and and mm -hmm, and lo true. and localism. Uh, because people are afraid of losing their identity. I mean, in, in China, the hutongs have all been taken down. That's really tragic. They're, those are amazing places. Um, uh, maybe they're medieval cities, you know, the kinds of mm -hmm. cities we really loved. Um, so while we, uh, we work in globally, we are trying to do what we can to respond in a way that's unique to that place. And it's not to say that we're trying to recreate something that was pre-existing there or tap into some historic uh, zeitgeist or something, but rather to make something new now, 21st century, but, but that's completely unique. And so, for instance, Zariadier Park, we just won a year ago mm -hmm. now. We won a competition to do a park in, in Moscow right next to Red Square mm -hmm. and the Kremlin. Um, it's the first time this piece of property will be turned over to the public. <clears throat> and what we brought that, that is something that, we're, that we've done in the past is uh, the Highline Park, this paving system, which is, mm -hmm. which is unregulated and, mm -hmm. and lets people wander in various ways. We brought that concept to the park. Um, but but it's not about saying, well, I'm doing the same park as New York. It's completely different. Um, but it is saying, I'm bringing an ideal about a kind of freedom of movement. And that's mm -hmm. a metaphor for a sort of kind of personal freedom that Muscovites don't have, bringing that to this public space. Um, and, uh, and, and that's sort of the international thing. But the, the other, the other uh, ingredients of, of the park were Russia's own landscapes that we worked with local mm -hmm. botanists and landscape architects to figure out how to bring in those local landscapes to make to make landscape which is uniquely Russian and uniquely mm -hmm. from Moscow it could be nowhere else um, and in so doing making a new kind of place that's that's neither old and, and of that historically of that place nor is it 
we hope not neither totally, global not totally global nor, yes it's it's, uh, it's neither yeah but it's some kind of hybrid. reduction is local maybe. correct yeah that's yeah. true yeah uh, what about turkey i mean is this the first time you're coming to turkey no i've been to turkey um several times before i spent uh, one of my summer vacations here about mm. 20 years ago it was very different then mm. uh i was driving around the, the are we the talking peninsula. about istanbul or istanbul or a little bit and also uh the 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 main part of Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, the Asian part, mm -hmm. uh, driving around in Cappadocia and mm -hmm. various other places, yeah. uh, the coast. But Istanbul in particular, which is one of the world's greatest cities, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's been around for thousands of years. It has all the layers of history, uh, you know, pre-Christian, Christian, Muslim, uh, contemporary, Uh, it's all here layered up. I mean, only Jerusalem is more layered. Uh, mm -hmm. Even Rome can't claim that. And so I find the city amazing, fascinating. It's, it feels like a real melting pot, more so now than it did when I was here 20 years ago. And yet it also feels more conservative in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's interesting. I haven't spent a you lot of- You refer to this uh, neo-nationalist movement or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I think when I came do, here... Do you really uh, feel it in the city or do you do you uh, hear it? I, just, it's both. Huh? I, of both. course it's both. I, uh -huh. You know, you hear it on the news, uh, you see what's what is happening politically and it's... it doesn't look like the democracy that you thought maybe it mm -hmm. would want to be. It seems a little bit more um, autocratic. Um, and then you walk the streets and I, I feel like I see more Um, women with religious uh -huh. garb on. Comparing with 20 years ago. Compared yeah. with 20 years ago. I, I, you know, when I was here then, it felt like in any other city. Now, going, you know, any other international global city. Just, just mm -hmm. I, I can make myself right at home, and yet the mm -hmm. architecture was amazing, That's beautiful, true. thousands of years old. Getting back to your last question, it's not to say that that is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, in fact, I think it, it does reflect Uh, a lot of people's desire to relocate their places to make them of their, uh, you know, of their culture and mm -hmm. not of the international culture. And so, perhaps, when I see, you know, ladies with with more covering on, mm -hmm. I shouldn't look at that as going backwards in time, but but simply to 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 be more local. I don't know if that's the truth, but I but I'm just wondering with myself. Yes, but most of the architects in Turkey now feel themselves as if they are forced to uh, carry on a kind of a, a artificial sense of uh, nationalism. So sure. if, if something that the uh, identity or something is uh, artificially set up, uh, then uh, that, there starts the problem. The otherwise Otherwise, I mean, it, there's no problem because if re mm. it really reflects the culture and the context and it comes out of the source. But the problem starts when you uh, start to build a kind of a, uh, identity that is isolated from the sure. uh, reality. So mm. we, we cannot, especially when the architecture is concerned, that is the problem now uh, we are, because when, when Um, the, uh, a kind of a national architecture is referred, what is understood is mostly copy-paste uh, figures of past, uh, sure. but, uh, which, which does not refer to uh, a kind of a, a cultural issue that is sustainable. Sure. That, that, that is the significant yeah. uh, question. Otherwise, I mean, the, the other way around, it is also an artificial engagement with the, uh, let's say, mainstream. Uh, so, as, as it is anywhere all around the world, uh, too many images are circulating uh, in the media, right. in the internet, and most of the young architects are influenced by them, and so they, they want to be like that and freed from any contextual givens or Uh, issues. Sure. So the, the, the architecture is reduced to a kind of a uh, maybe uh, image uh, 
uh, creating something like that. So it works. I mean, it, it, uh, it's, it's, sometimes it works, sometimes, I mean, but when you have a critical look uh, on this issue, I mean, you, you feel it and it may become uh, suddenly disturbing. Uh, because it's neither that nor that this uh, something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just think there's been there's a history lesson here, and that is, you know, and I don't want to be extreme, but you know, Hitler and Speer, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and and Germanness, and so that's true. Yeah, there was modernity. It was bubbling up from Germany. That was the that mm -hmm. was you know, Russia and Germany, and there were a few places where it was really in, in France true, a little yeah. bit, and Hitler said no. You know, this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. We need to keep our culture. And there was a, a, a for, you know, forced, uh, a lot of things were forced, but mm -hmm. the architecture was forced into a kind of backward looking German uh, uh -huh. architecture. Um, Representing power and ideology. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Right, and, and I think that that's, you know, we have to be careful of, of, of something like that, where there's a false. Uh, or ersatz mm -hmm. um, tie in, into some 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 fake history. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, other at other times there have also been references historically, um, and and those have been this the centerpieces of particular architecture movements. I mean, just mm -hmm. think about the Renaissance. That's you know, true. this was not invented. These, the language of the Renaissance was not invented in the Renaissance. It was invented in Rome and Greek, uh, Greece. True. So, um, and here, you know, so uh, it, it's, I don't know, there's good lessons and bad lessons, let's just say. That, 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 that's <laughs> true, I mean, uh, but uh, uh, I don't know how much you had a chance to uh, uh, have a search on contemporary Turkish architecture, but uh, do you feel a kind of a sustainable uh, continuity with the uh, uh, contemporary scene of architecture within uh, the city as you, as you walk around? I mean, uh, what, what do you feel in terms of contemporary examples? Um. Unfortunately, I haven't had enough time to walk around during this trip, so I can't speak about it. But my impression driving around some I've done today um, is that contemporary architecture is, it, you know, is, is not really part of what I'm seeing. I'm seeing contemporary building, mm. a lot of that, and the difference is you know, building versus architecture. Architecture is thoughtful, and uh, with a capital A, is, are, is, is thoughtful and, um, you know, considered and, you know, maybe outrageous, but it, it's at least trying to do something. I do see around Istanbul all over the place. That is a very good lots, observation, actually. Yeah. Lots of glass towers, mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of new looking things, uh, but, but do they seem like they're thoughtful? Do they seem like they're contributing to the city? It doesn't appear Pretending to be so. Pretending to be something. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, you know, they're like, you know, peac here, here. peacocks, <laughs> but, you know, with, without the, the barnyard. <laughs> that, that, that's actually true. I mean, that's the major criticism in Turkey yeah. to, uh, towards contemporary practice, let me say. And the other issue is, of course, uh, the sense of urbanity. I mean, the... Mm. the uh, good uh, buildings or good-looking buildings, when they come together, they, they, they don't accidentally apparently make a good-looking right. city or good city, good right. urban life. Uh, it doesn't uh, mean like that. Uh, and um, uh, there is a sense of urbanity, actually, in, in most of your uh, work. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if it's true, but can we say that in that, in that sense, uh, High Line is a kind of a breaking point uh, because, I mean, your group mostly became popular in Turkey with that project, maybe sure. all around the world, it's like that. Yes. But, I mean, once you uh, get familiar with the, the work, and, and I get into, uh, if, if you look at the other projects, you will see that, I mean, there's a sense of continuity of that uh, idea of urbanity sure. within different scales, uh, of sure. course. So, I mean, most of the, uh, even the school buildings and cultural buildings, uh, uh, center for performing art, I mean, they're always trying to integrate a sense of 
exterior space with the interior space in a meaningful way so that I mean the building tends to become a part of the environment or I mean sure. reflects the environment I don't know if whether these are uh, to the point comments or sure. not but um, so I mean uh, how do you see this uh, I mean on the other hand it's very difficult uh, to to be based in New York and uh, to to uh, develop like that because I mean the, the, the sense of urbanity is very rigid, uh, so it, it, it brings brings a kind of a uh, difficulty, an extra difficulty. Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't really done an infill project in New York City until now. Now yeah. we're working on MoMA, mm -hmm. which yeah, is know, which is an infill project, mm -hmm. and that's that's sort of challenging for us uh, in in many respects. But um, but I think your observation is correct. There's a there's a, a sense of uh, urban engagement that each of our projects has, even if it's not in a city. Um, mm -hmm. where we're, we try to make it be um, engage its environment in a way that is almost urban. In Create nature. its own urbanity. Co correct, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that the program in a, in a domestic house, for instance, we're doing mm -hmm. our, yeah, our first domestic yeah. houses, one in the Hamptons, and huh. and in those we. Split the program up into you know public programs and private programs, and and sort of orchestrated the movement through the house and the collective spots in the house in a way that you might organize a public building, mm -hmm. um, and so it is something that infuses all of our work, um, and you know something we're interested in. We like all of our projects to to participate in in the world. Uh, every project you make is a civic project, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. it must be. A good citizen, or you must you must find a civic part in the project. You, might, you inevitably yeah. you must emphasize. But it, but it's but if you can see the building, it's a civic project. Mm -hmm. It you know if you make a building that is that can be seen by the public outside, mm -hmm. it it has a, a mandate to behave in ways that are engaging and and positive. It has a mandate to be a civic pro project. Are there any new and exciting projects forthcoming? <laughs> In our practice? Yeah, yes. Oh, uh, of course there are. <laughs> yeah, no, we, 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 uh, we are uh, opening eight buildings this year. Eight, eight. buildings. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, three in California, the Broad Museum, the Stanford Art and Art His uh, History Building, the Berkeley Art Museum, the project in China, the factory is opening, the project in Rio de Janeiro is opening, uh, we have a project at Columbia opening. Uh, business, business school. The know. business school is down the road. Uh -huh. the, the the medical education building is ah, opening. Yeah, uh, I, the I the, the tall so, one. Yeah, I showed yeah, I one that. slide here. Yeah, yeah, uh, a, a, a house in um, uh, in the Hamptons is opening. So we have quite a bit of work opening in all a, a, a range mm -hmm. from domestic to educational to to institutional, from very small to very large. Uh, I think that. The office is going to be redefined in a certain sense by what happens this next year. How many people are working at the moment? 110. 110. What about MoMA? It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There are lots of discussions ongoing, I mean, even uh, in Turkish media. Yeah. Uh, because it's always uh, not easy to uh, uh, be a part of something which is very powerful. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say that you know it's an interesting give and take. Uh, the discussions are are of the highest order that we have with the directors and and the curators. Uh, there is, um, it's fertile territory. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes for an interesting uh, and sometimes challenging uh, environment in which to make great piece of architecture. But but I think that we're because of that there will be something absolutely unique as a result. I think one of the, uh, one of the problems, or I mean one of the things that, that is accelerating the discussions is that uh, you are not staying silent. You are trying to do something unique yes. that, that may even be competitive with the existing uh, building or the environment. Uh, that may be the basic reason because I mean, if you had been preferred to stay silent and invisible, I mean, like the, maybe the annex of the Guggenheim or something like sure. that, 
then it, it would be easier and yes. less discussion. I don't know. Yes. But I think, I think this is a kind of a preference yeah. consciously uh, selected. Huh? Well, I have to say with, with MoMA, we, we have identified what we think are, are issues mm. with uh, the way that the current building operates and, uh, and, and we're trying to use, to overcome those problems. And huh. it's not that we're trying to do something that is overwhelming mm -hmm. to, to the old building. Contrary to that, we're happy to play background role, but what we do want to make sure we do is to make... Uh, to without, make without losing the identity, I mean. What's, you know, without yeah, losing the identity. It's, it's not really a formal proposition, but it's an institutional one. What we're trying to do with this project is make sure that we return MoMA to MoMA. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it, that it actually Get, you know, is what the institution that it should be. Mm -hmm. Was that last expansion, did, was, is, the, is it still MoMA after that expansion? Mm -hmm. We're asking mm -hmm. the question, we yeah, don't know. Right, yeah. And so it's not about a formal proposition as much as a, a sort of institutional proposition. I see, okay. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, okay. it's, it was a lot of, is there anything you want to add or ask? On, uh, <laughs> uh, um, well, um, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to know, just maybe turning the tables a little bit, how, the, what the mood towards uh, contemporary architecture, or let's even call it smart architecture, uh, you know, kind of thoughtful architecture is in this country. And wh how is it, how is the government receiving it? Or how, what are the partnerships that are being forged between mm -hmm. people that have, um, you know, contemporary practices that are questioning or pushing the envelope, how, how is that working in, in this country? Actually, I mean, the, the um, um, good or thoughtful architecture, let me say, uh, architecture based upon research is mm -hmm. highly dependent, dependent upon the client and the client quality. Right. So, uh, I mean, uh, I don't think that there is any problem with the understanding right. or the theory of uh, a thoughtful architecture and it is integration with the contemporary right. architectural medium. However, I mean, there is not enough ground in, in, in terms of uh, finding proper clients which right. will provide uh, a kind of a uh, basis for such experimental and research-based different architecture. Right. And uh, government is the biggest, I mean, client in Turkey, as, as it is in many places. And it is highly, I mean, uh, conservative in the sense that, uh, as we have discussed earlier, they are trying to promote a kind of an artificial uh, identity-based architecture, and uh, which is not very easy to uh, create a kind of a research-based um, uh, design on, on, on that issue. Uh -huh. uh, on the other hand, I mean, this, the conservation of cities and buildings are a very significant and important issue, right. both in Istanbul, in many places in Turkey. Yeah. And uh, I think we have, we need more sensitivity on, on those mm. issues, which mm. is not uh, publicly understood well. Right. Right. Uh, but I mean, there are there's a very uh, uh, good young generation coming now. I think I mean things will go better. Yeah. Uh, let me hope at least. Well, one thing I would say, and I, this is probably the last point I'll, I'll make, is is one of the reasons our practice has flourished is not because of the private world, but because of the public world, yeah, which is that. really surprising to mm -hmm. me in a way. Uh -huh. um, we've had such support from gov the government, mm -hmm. mostly from the government, the city of New York, uh -huh. um, under Michael Bloomberg. Um, he basically funded the Lincoln Center renovation that was our mm -hmm. first major mm -hmm. New York project. And then the High Line um, was the, the, the uh, capital cost. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was covered by the city of New York. And it's because the mayor decided that he wanted to support great design and also great public space, mm -hmm. um, both at the same time. Some would say f for the rich mm -hmm. and for the elite. But yeah. okay, it's open to the public. These things are open to the public. That's, yeah, that's so true. it's a it's a question of are the p 
people, the people feel comfortable going there. It's not for the rich. Anyway, that's another question. But surprisingly, the government was instrumental in helping ours and many small practices, shop and uh, other, other burgeoning young practices, uh, be, be able to, to become substantial voices in, in mm-hmm. the culture uh, world. Um, because of the city's support, very, very surprising to everyone. That that's very important. I think the the mayor of Istanbul is an architect. Oh, really? I don't know, yeah, uh-huh. and he and he he has a PhD on conservation, etc. And uh, and uh, actually, it's a great chance that uh, within his uh, uh, period, uh, Istanbul could have. Uh, some of the very unique uh, mm. architectural uh, projects or examples, but I mean, unfortunately, uh, yet we haven't uh, seen as 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 much as uh, maybe we have to. I don't know. Maybe still, still we are optimistic. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, I think I think it it's it's. I just say that because I think it, uh, our work as architects is so much at the level of policy as much as it is in design um, and making That's true, yeah. and making sure that we're forging good public policy and we often have to do that through our relationships with governmental agencies. That's true. That's so true. it's just I think we do we do have work to do as architects. Yes. <laughs> Charles Ramfro, thank you very much thank you. for participating us. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, it was it's nice fun. to have you here. Great. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think they are going to